I was in that mess for over two years. I was being raped daily every hour. Football helped me get through until my rescue date. There are more slaves today than there have ever been in human history. Labor slavery, sex slavery, human trafficking, child labor. A lot of these crimes that are happening against the poor. When I think about sex trafficking, which is part of human trafficking, my heart goes out to many who are in that system, some involuntarily, but some are drawn in because of need. A few years ago, my wife and I felt the urge to really get involved with IJM, International Justice Mission. They're the world's largest anti-slavery, anti-human trafficking organization. Whenever we commit to something financially, we want to be hands-on. So we decided to take some trips with them. We opened it up to the NFL family. We took the trip down to Dominican Republic. This year, when we went, was at an aquarium. This young girl, Sophia, she's about uh, seven years old. Sophia was sexually abused in the home by somebody that should have been and was trusted, a family member. And then when I'm hugging this, this child, she's smiling and laughing. Everything just hit me emotionally, and I couldn't stop crying. I just couldn't stop crying. She forever left a mark on me. The NFL does something called My Calls, My Cleats, where players can pick a certain cause that they want to support. And so got my cleats painted up, put it on social media. Then I get a message from a woman saying that she was trafficked and that my cleats meant a lot to her because she remembers being in hotel rooms and that she's a football fan. She would watch football, and that was the only thing that got her through being raped and just being, being abused. When I first got it, I was, I think I was shocked. I just saw the post with the cleats for IJM. It brought me to tears. I'm a survivor. Got rescued by the FBI August 7, 2013. I was in that mess for over two years. I was in that mess for over two years. When I was locked in motels, all I ever had was football on the TV. It saved me from killing myself many times. Even though I was being raped daily every hour, football helped me get through. Are you going to throw those cleats away? If you do, can I have them? I can prove I'm a survivor. I'm real. My story is real. New Orleans being a port city, New Orleans being an international city, there's a lot of tourism here. There are a lot of people that come here to, quote unquote, have a good time. We want to get a better grasp on what's happening locally. So we're headed to meet uh, Sherry Combs. She's a human trafficking case manager here in New Orleans. Coven House is right outside the French Quarter. It's a homeless youth shelter. We started our human trafficking division approximately three years ago. And in that three years, I have worked with 218 victims and survivors of human trafficking, the youngest being 12 mm. and the oldest being 38. Um, boys, girls, boys, girls, men, women, transgender, children, yeah. adults, youth. I just remember I just felt so hopeless every day. I just felt depressed. That's the word I used like a lot growing up because this all began when I was 14. These men knew how old I was and they still decided to see me and take advantage of me. They know what's going on. They don't care. They just want one thing. You're talking about years and years of recovery. A lot of people are under the impression that the moment they're out of the situation, that um, their ordeal is over when it's really just beginning. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine every time you took a shower, that brought you back to the time you were sexually assaulted, so then therefore you avoid showering for weeks on end? Someone is telling you when you're able to sleep. Someone's telling you when you're able to eat, what you can eat, what um, you can wear, just suddenly you're just not in control of your life at all. All of these simple things that you're able to do in life, you have no control over. 
When they walk through the door, I'm outraged. I'm outraged at the exploitation that's yeah. still taking place. And when you're sitting across from somebody with a broken jaw and a broken eye socket, and they haven't eaten in days, and, and they're, they're scared just to even fall asleep, it's just, it's infuriating. Sex traffickers, they will find your weakness, whether it be to have a better job, or to have a better education, or maybe even if you were looking for love, like I was, and they will exploit that weakness. It, it, it could happen to anyone, and it could be anyone. When you see them slowly heal, and you see them slowly take steps to trust again, and love again, and let people love them in a healthy way, yeah. that, that's a blessing. There is hope, most definitely. There's hope. Just love yourself, that's it. If I get the chance to meet Savannah, I really just want her to know that even though we don't know each other, I, I care about her and I care about her story. I want her to leave feeling like, you know what, somebody who didn't know me cares about me. I've experienced nothing but bad men on this earth. And so to meet him, knowing that he fights for justice and actually has a heart for people is Probably what I'm nervous about, but it's exciting at the same time. Oh my gosh. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. This is crazy. You like it? Yes. What? I mean, a little different, huh? Yeah. It's good oh to see you. Oh my gosh, you too. A couple years ago, I remember posting the picture of those cleats, right? And you responded. I didn't know who you were. I, honestly, I thought it was some random joke person or whatever, but that really hit home for me because you were talking about your experience. I didn't know that there was actually athletes out there that cared about this topic. Seeing you have the platform that you have and like reaching out to people like me that were in that situation and just continually like raising awareness, you are actually representing a person like me. And I wanted you to know that it meant a lot to me. I was like locked in the back of a U-Haul all the time, like traveling all around America. Um, so I didn't really see daylight, didn't really get human interaction, no food, no water. Ordering somebody who's being trafficked is easy as getting a pizza. You can pick up your phone and order a girl and she'll be delivered to you. Around July of 2013, I was about to run and I made a few attempts, didn't happen, had a shotgun shoved down my throat. Um, chained to basement pillars, starved. I was forced to eat dog food. And then one day I woke up and I just felt this peace in my soul saying, today's the day you're going. It's one of the hardest days of my life, was getting out and like having to look at myself in the mirror and say, I don't even know you anymore. Yeah. I can't imagine what you're going through, but I'm so incredibly proud of you. Like how strong you are to even be sitting here sitting here in New Orleans after all this happened. Yeah, and yeah. I was trafficked here, too. Wow. So, like, last night, just being in a hotel was hard. Yes. The first time I actually traveled again was yesterday, and I just had flashbacks of, here I am traveling, and I'm in a hotel by myself, and, yeah. you know, it was hard, but that's how I know I've come a long way, is the fact that I walked into a hotel last night. Wow. Because I would never do that. When you can take something like this that, that's a cause and attach it to a real life, then it becomes even more important to keep doing what you're doing. Loving kindness, justice, righteousness is what the Lord delights in. Those are three things that I want to delight in. Those are three things that I want to be known for. Yeah, I want to be known that I play football. Some days you win, some days you lose. But when it's all said and done, I want it to be said that I delighted in, that I strived for, that I spent my time, my talent, my treasure in things that were kind, things that were just, and things that were righteous. <laughs>